It has been four months since we installed Starlink on our trawler and it's about time for us to give you uh, how it was, if we recommend it, and details of our setup. Without further ado, I'm going to get right into the details and I hope you guys stick around for the end because we are celebrating tonight here in Navarre Beach. Happy New Year! Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> Hi, we're Jen, Elliot, and Ollie. In 2019, we left the United States and backpacked through 11 countries, all before deciding to come back home and try something completely new, pivoting into boat life. Our current adventure is America's Great Loop, a 6,000 mile journey through small towns, big cities, and the wilderness from the eastern portion of the United States, through the Great Lakes and Canada, and down the Midwest rivers, all aboard our home on the water, Pivot. Make sure you subscribe as we share our journey through the highs, lows, and everything in between. We run our Starlink off of our batteries and our inverter the majority of the time. It plugs into a regular outlet, which goes to the Starlink router, and then we have the very long ethernet cord going through our aft cabin, up, kind of like in our aft cabin door, up into our dinghy, which is where it lives. We are using the Starlink mount that comes default included and we didn't do any changes to it. Along America's Great Loop, we are constantly in areas of zero cell service and the Starlink is always working. It's not as fast as like a home internet, I would say, but we get about five megabobs download on average, which is fine, it's good enough. For us uploading a maybe 10 gigabyte YouTube video, it'll take 12 hours. So it still takes a long time, but it's always there and it's always available. So that makes up for its relatively slow speeds as what we've found. Starlink costs $135 a month for the RV version, which is the one that we have. The speeds have been pretty decent. I've been very happy with the speeds, although they haven't been as fast as I was hoping that they would be. It's not the same as like Google Fiber or really fast home internet or really fast library internet, but it has been fast enough to where you're not thinking about it. It just works. And that's all we really want. Allowing us to work while we're underway at anchor or at a marina. Now, a couple of the downsides to Starlink that I need to discuss is first, the power consumption. So we were kind of operating about even with our power before Starlink basically generating a little bit more power than we use. And we use a lot of power on Pivot. We're always working. We have cameras, drones, everything that we're charging. And running Starlink all the time has eaten up a lot of our battery. So we've seen roughly, it's about seven amps an hour. Add that up to 12, 14 hours, it's 100 amp hours. You can do the math for your battery bank to see how much batteries are gonna be required to run Starlink if you're on the hook a lot like we are. Here it is in our Victron app where I unplugged the Starlink so you can see our amp bridge go down and then as it booted up, it came back up. The other thing that you have to get used to with the Starlink is that it does take a while to boot up and find connections to the satellites. For us being power conscious, we do turn it off and turn it back on. So it takes anywhere between five and probably 20 minutes to get going. So you're not gonna be able to turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, like you might be able to do a hotspot or tethering to your phone. We've also noticed quite a bit of intermittent downtime with heavy storms. We have it in our dinghy, right? So sometimes if we're turning a corner or it's trying to find the satellite where the boom is, we can have a little bit of dropped traffic there, but nothing too bad pretty normal things for satellite internet. We haven't had any data caps and it has consistently worked, so we are very happy with it. We would buy it in a heartbeat again, and if you are concerned about data on the road while traveling, it is a very worthwhile investment. Starlink has an app that's where you do all of the management and it's where you check out how the Starlink is behaving, and that's also where you check out how well the Starlink is performing, and one thing I'll note is normally it says it's do doing a lot better on the app than it is really, like whenever you're working on your computer. And so just keep that in mind. And you can see at the bottom, we have the download and the upload speeds. So you could even see just how variable it is right now. We went from seven to 0 0.1. We have a little bit of cloud cover coming in. Upload is staying consistent. <laughs> Again, it's not perfect. It's satellite internet on a boat. 
but it is so consistently available that we would do it again in a heartbeat. Now, today is New Year's Eve, and we don't normally make videos about the holidays because these videos take so long to produce and edit and the loop is a full-time job that they end up coming out six months in the future. It's a wild guess when this video is going to come out. But without further ado, let's enjoy the day. If you want to know more about internet on boats, check out our breakdown on showandjoe.com. While you're there, check out our other articles about America's Great Loop and boating in general. It has been a couple days since we last checked in, uh, but we are still at Juana's. Um, it is New Year's Eve, and Juana's is the place to be here in Navarre. Kevin, who's arranged the dock, he has been super kind, super gracious, and so we've been eating there every day. It's been really good, actually. Um, we've been going for breakfast, and today I think we're also gonna go get some drinks. I don't know, but like the sun is out. It's so nice. The storm came through yesterday. It was super nasty, and this is the aftermath. What do you think, Ollie? Can I get a high five? Can I get a high five? Can I get a, hey, can I get a high five? Come on, give me a high five. High five. High five. Thank you. There's regular beers and there's light beers and beers that make you pee. But the best beers are little beers. So here's to you and me. Here, here. Cheers. Having a little bit of a impromptu for us, but a little potluck for New Year's Eve dinner. So we are bringing the mashed potatoes. It's the first time trying to cook in an Instapot because everything else is ready. <laughs> I'm gonna fry up some garlic. I'm gonna do some garlic mashed potatoes. That was, uh, garlic mashed potatoes. Garlic mashed potatoes. So we have bread and salads. Ready salad, sounds like a good start. New Year's Eve! Countdown is one hour and 25 minutes until 2023. With that, we just wanted to say thank you to everybody that has supported us this year. Of course, again, this is New Year's Eve 2022, and I don't know when this is gonna come out, but still, the feeling still remains. Our feeling this year is of gratitude. Gratitude for having you watch our videos, for you to be a part of our journey, and for you to come with us as we travel around America's Great Loop. So thank you for being here. And tomorrow we are going to be cruising to Destin Beach, Florida. So make sure you're subscribed to see that. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you then. Oh, happy new year. Hi, baby. Happy new year. <laughs>